This video is going to have a look at Python variables and their data types. Before we move on to that, let me just remind you of the two models we've considered so far in this playlist. We know we have this notion of input, process and output, and we also have this model here of a computer program. And we can see that the program statements manipulate the data stored in the variables. And of course, the program variables store the data. Now we're going to be concentrating on this here, the program variables for this video. What I'd like to do, I'd like to start off by looking at random access memory. And variables are really reserved memory locations used to store data. Now if we have a look at random access memory, it's just a number of contiguous memory locations that have content and addresses. So here, for example, we can see the content of locations are the data. So all of the data the program manipulates are stored in memory locations. Now each individual memory location has an address and addresses are used to access the locations that contain the data. In Python however access to the content i.e. the data is via variable identifiers in other words variable names. As high-level language programmers using Python, we don't have to worry about the address of the variables. We use a name instead. So in other words, we hide the details of the underlying hardware. And as programmers, we simply use a sensible name that allows us to access variables. Let's consider a program assignment statement as shown here. We can see I've typed in first number equals two now that equal sign is an assign and it means that what is on the right hand side of the assignment statement as we look at it is copied to what's on the left hand side in other words two becomes the value of the variable first number now when python runs it will create an area of memory suitable to store this particular two here which is an integer and it does this by creating an area of memory, which I'm going to model here using uh, this box. And of course, it will give it an appropriate name. And of course, the name is going to be first number. So we can see that Python creates an area in the computer's memory. But as high level language programmers, this is OK for us. We can use this simple model here. Let's have a box with the name to represent the variable. Now, this is the assignment statement. And 2 is assigned to the variable first number, which we can show by this arrow. Now, of course, we can also animate this as if it was taking place in a model of the computer. Here's the 2, and it simply moves into the variable where that variable is, if we remember from what we've just been saying, is an area somewhere in the computer's memory. And I say somewhere because we don't actually care as high-level language programmers. The interpreter sorts this out for us. We simply now know that 2 is stored in this thing called first number. And this thing is a variable. So what we're looking at here is a good model of a variable. Something that has a name and something that has content. And of course the content is the, the value of the variable. So this is referred to as the identifier of the variable. In in other words, the name of the variable. And this is the value that's stored in this particular variable. Let's have a look at a, another example. Here you can see I've typed temperature equals 100. So this could be somewhere in a Python program. And what we're really going to do here, we're going to take the 100 and store it in the variable temperature. Now Python will create an area of the computer's memory, which I'm modeling here with this box and of course we give it an appropriate name and the name obviously is going to be temperature now this particular equal sign here we have to remember is the assignment symbol and what will happen is the 100 is assigned to the variable temperature as we can see here so the 100 is transferred to temperature and for our model we can imagine the 100 appearing as it does here and is moved into the variable temperature and of course, that's what will happen down there, that machine code. 100 will move to some memory location. And that's some memory location we understand using this word here, temperature. 
So what we're looking at here is the variable, which has a name and has content. And of course, we refer to the name as being an identifier of the variable, but you can use name if you like, and it has the value 100. Let's have a quick look at this one again. Here you can say I'm saying first number equals 2. We create a space in memory. The 2 is copied in to the variable, and we can see it has an identifier and a value. Now I've repeated that there because what I'm now going to do is to do another assignment statement as shown here. And this could appear somewhere in a Python program, and it is saying cost equals 623.58. Now the first thing to note here is I am assigning to cost a number that has a fractional decimal part. Now that fractional decimal part means that what we're dealing with here is what's called a float. So in other words, we have got a number being assigned to cost in the same way as we had a number being assigned to first number. The difference being, however, when we assigned 2 to the first number we were dealing with an integer and here we're dealing with the float. But everything else is going to be roughly the same because what will happen Python and its interpreter will create an area of the computer's memory. And you can see here I've drawn a bigger box. Now this is because a float does take up more space in the computer's memory than does an integer. So in other words it takes more space to save something or store something that has fractions than it does to store an integer. So what will happen is we can see that we will give this particular area of memory the name cost because we can see the program statement's got the word cost in it for its variable. And what we'll now see is that this particular sign here, well that's the assignment statement, so this particular float will be copied into the variable cost and we can animate that here by showing the number moving into the actual variable. Now we can also now see that all of this is the variable in the same way as the ones we've looked at already and indeed this is the identifier and this is the value. But the key here however is I've shown a bigger box because I'm dealing with floats. So just to remind you this is an integer and this here is a float. Every program variable has a data type and we've just seen two where one had the data type of an integer and the other had the data type of a float. Python has five standard data types and those data types are shown here. We have number, string, list, tuple and dictionary. Now we're only going to be interested in this particular video with numbers and string. If we have a look at numbers, we can see we have an integer data type and we also have a float data type, examples of which we've just seen. So an integer, for example, could store 23, whereas a float could store 345.376. Now a string, well, here's an example of a string. It stores Hello World. Now if we look at those examples, look at the 23 and look at the 345.376 and you can see I've drawn those boxes different sizes and that's because this mimics the fact that a float takes more memory space than does an integer. However, if we look at the string it would imply that this is bigger again. Well the truth is a string can be from a very small size to a very big size. If you were to store your name, address, telephone number, email address in one long string, yes, that would take up more space than an integer. But again, what you can see I've done here, I've simply represented a string in a modelled way. In other words, a box for each of the letters. Now, between hello and world, you see there's a box there that's empty, and that represents the fact that there would be a space in the string. Now, the data type of a variable indicates the following. The memory allocation for the data item. In other words, we've just seen that a float takes up more memory than an integer. So if you decide that you want a variable that's going to store integers, it won't take up as much space as a variable that would store a float. We also have the range of possible values the data item can have. For example, if you take an integer, 
you can have a very small number in an integer and a very big number in an integer. But what's that range? What is the smallest number? What is the biggest number? Within Python, there is also another number type which we haven't discussed yet, and that's long. And long also stores an integer, but it has a bigger range than a straightforward integer, which means it can store a much bigger integer and a much smaller integer. The other thing we need to concern ourselves with data types are the way in which the data can be used and processed. And we're going to illustrate that with a couple of examples in a moment. Let's have a look at this computer program here. It's a program with four program statements. Now the first statement is first number equals two. Now what Python will do when it sees this, it'll interpret it and it will produce an area of computer's memory which we now know is a variable. And of course it'll give it the name first number. And we can see that this will therefore store two. The next thing we can see is this program statement will execute and of course it will create a variable and it will give that variable the name second number and naturally three will be stored in this particular variable. Then the next line will execute here and what we can see either side of the assignment statement on the right hand side as we look at it there's a multiplication taking place and on the left hand side we can see it says product so the interpreter will produce a variable that will give the name product and of course what will now happen is the contents of first number and the content of second number will be multiplied together and inside the central processing unit we have an arithmetic and logic unit and this is designed to carry out operations such as multiplication so the 3 and the 2, as we see here, will be transferred to the input of the arithmetic and logic unit. In other words, the content of those two variables are transferred to the arithmetic and logic unit, where they receive this signal here, multiply. So the content of the first number variable and the second number variable are multiplied together to give, at the output of the arithmetic and logic unit, the result of 6. And of course that 6 will now be stored in product because we assign it to product. Then we go on to execute this statement here and what this will do, it will join the string the product is to product after product has been converted to a string. In other words it concatenates them. Now we've covered this in an earlier video. So the output of the program will now be as shown here. The product is 6. Now all of this has shown the fact that this particular operator here, this multiplication symbol, this is how we show a multiplication in Python, works on integer data types. In other words, it's possible to multiply an integer variable by another integer variable as you've just seen. Here we can see a very similar program. Let's take each line in turn. Here I'm saying first string is assigned Philip. Now what will happen is the interpreter will create an area of the computer's memory, in other words a variable, and it will call this variable first string. The difference here however to the previous one we were looking at, this is going to be a variable of the type string and Philip will be copied into that particular string. We'll now go on to this one here. And what will now happen is the Python interpreter will create another variable and give it the name second string. Now to this we will assign the string Jones. We will now go on to this, which says result equals first string multiplied by second string. What we're attempting to do here is a multiplication. And we saw we had no problems when we were multiplying an integer type by an integer type. But here we're attempting to multiply the string Philip by the string Jones. Now ask yourself in simple terms, what is the point in that? Why would you want to multiply Philip by Jones? It doesn't make any sense. Let's see how Python will respond to this, which is really not a sensible thing to attempt to do. 
Well, this is the program here when it runs. And we can see red text appearing as shown here. In other words, the program has crashed. And what Python has done, it's not allowed this multiplication to take place. And we can see it gives us a type error here. It says, count multiply sequence by non-integer of type string. It, it's a bit cryptic, that I must admit. But essentially, it means that you cannot multiply a string variable by another string variable. Consequently, the multiplication of a string type by another string type using this operator is not allowed. But of course, that operator was allowed to multiply two integer types. So to summarize, the data type indicates the memory allocation for the data item. And we've seen this. Floats take up more space than integers. The range of possible values the data items can have. The type integer has a range from the smallest possible integer to the biggest possible integer. A long has a bigger range. It can store a much smaller integer and a much bigger integer. And of course, the other one is the way in which the data can be used and processed. We've just seen that it is possible to use an operator to multiply together two variables that are of type integer but it was not possible to multiply together two variables whose type were both string.